My friend, the artist Carol Cole, assembles wonderful sculptures out of a variety of found and collected objects. Her work always has a formal beauty. But it often also carries a message. When I learned that Carol had a show at Philadelphia's Cerulean Arts, I figured we were all in for a treat. Carol, can you tell us about your show? In the summer of 2019, I was told that my next solo show at Cerulean Arts was scheduled for the month of May 2020. Since we were expecting our first grandchild to be born in California that fall, I got busy right away because I knew we would be traveling out there a lot. Chase was born in late October and we were able to visit three times before March. By then I had made a dozen new pieces for the show and thought I was in good shape to finish a few more by May. In mid-March, Philadelphia was shut down and my show was canceled indefinitely. Disappointing to say the least. I no longer had a deadline or a desire to go to my studio to make new work. I feel your pain, Carol. This pandemic and the chaos swirling around it has taken a toll on most of us. Can you talk a bit about your process when you do feel like going to your studio? My sculpture process is almost always object inspired. I start by pulling out some stuff from the boxes in my studio, put it on my work table, play around arranging it, and then something clicks and I figure out what to do. The final design and the meaning emerge only when the pieces finish. I began geometry by exploring what shapes I could make with the folding wood tape measure. And then I took out all the geometry related objects in my stash to use to create the piece. I enjoy geometry a lot. In high school, it was the only kind of math I liked. You got to use tools and make drawings. Sometimes when you least expect it, inspiration can grab hold of you, as Carol explains. After not going to my studio for months, I was surprised to wake up in the morning of Friday, May 29th, with a vision of two new pieces in my head. I could see them clearly and now had to make them match my vision. This never happens. I couldn't wait to get to the studio now. Strangely enough, that same afternoon, I got an email from Cerulean Gallery saying that they were reopening and my show was scheduled for July 15th to August 2nd. Now I not only had an inspiration, I had a deadline. On the previous Sunday, May 24th, the New York Times ran a special section commemorating the 100,000th death from COVID. They listed short obituaries of a thousand victims from across the country. I was very moved reading it, and I guess that's where the inspiration came from five days later. This became Pandemic 2020. I copied and reassembled the New York Times listing, covering a two by four foot board, and stained it red so that you could still read the words. I cut tar paper X's and glued them on. The four X's symbolize the crossing out of so many lives and plans, and also sort of gives the date in Roman numerals, 2020. Many people who came to the show or who saw it online were very moved by this piece, as am I. The other piece I envisioned is Vaccine, which depicts it as the light at the end of the tunnel. Some have said they saw this image as salvation or hope. It's the same thing. Tina and Michael, the owners of Cerulean Gallery, have done a great job dealing with this crisis. They created an excellent virtual gallery on the Cerulean Arts website, and this continues even though the show itself is over. I've heard from many people that they enjoyed seeing my show that way. Although there was no opening reception, 
The gallery was open to a few visitors at a time by appointment. I went there on opening day and it was thrilling to see my work and that of other artists up close and not just on a screen for a change. When I invited people to visit, I said I would meet them there and give them a private artist's talk and tour. During the two-week run of the show, I did this over a dozen times. It turned out to be a wonderful opportunity, and perhaps we'll do this again in the future, but hopefully next time without masks. I just want to say in closing, Chase, you have a wonderful grandmom. Hope this movie will help you remember her when you are old. You may have been born in a very difficult year, but I wish with all my heart that you have a long and grand life. <laughs>